Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Leo for January 2016. Check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where you can see my new astrology and other blogs. And also you can see more about my creating a successful online business program, which is enrolling, registering now. So what is going on in January? Well, we have a new year according to the solar-based calendar. It is not a new year astrologically. You know if you've listened to me for at least a year, then you know that unless there's something really exciting as far as moving forward transits going on in January, I'm not going to let us buy into the fact that this is a new year because it's not true energetically. It's not true astrologically. The astrological new year starts at the end of March when the sun moves into Aries and the personal planets start to move into Aries, Mercury gets there. We start having this blazing forward, this new, this bursting forth energy. That is what we are molded to think a new year is like, but the energy is just not like that. And while Capricorn is a very ambitious, productive type of an energy and the planets will be in Capricorn, you will have multiple planets in Capricorn. So it can be very productive, but it's just not, it doesn't carry the energy of being launched forward with um, enthusiasm. So if you're trying to do something new and it's a long-term venture, your best time to do it is not January. You've got some good time still in December if you're watching this in December until around the 20th of December. You've got um, some dicey days. You can listen to my December report to get the breakdown or if you subscribe to my email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com, I do a write-up um, for the month before and, sh and talk about which days are dicey and which days are better. But in any case, you've got some good dates in December to launch things. If you absolutely can't wait to launch until like the middle of February or beyond, then you might want to try to get something like that done in December. Mercury retrograde in January is plenty good for an amazing amount of things. But none of them are bringing your things into the light, you know, um, launching things, new things. If you are continuing something that you already had in motion before, that's fine. If you're analyzing things from the past, going over things from the past, that's fine. If you're having a meeting to discuss future plans without commitment as to what or when they're going to be, that's fine. There's a lot of energy with Pluto, and Pluto is a very deep digging type of energy. So it's, it's a great time for researching, for excavating, for looking into things, um, for doing deep inner work. You know, it's one of my favorite things to do and talk about, but um, Pluto is fantastic for that. And cleaning the house, organizing things, things like that. It's a good time for that. Now, perfectly matched with that for Leos, is this movement into your sixth house. So if you imagine a chart looks like a pizza pie with 12 different slices of pizza. Now imagine, okay, there is a restaurant in on the beach um, close to where I used to live and it revolves. So you're looking at this certain scene and then it's moving and then you're looking at this scene. Okay, well now you can see the bridge turns around. Now you can see this and then you see as you're rotating it's like what is front and center for you is different so if you imagine that's what this is like so you have this series this this circle around you and then there are these divisions of the circle broken down into these different parts and each of them relate to something specific some you know a general arena that has specific experiences in it so it's like you're rotating around with focus on these different areas as these personal planets move. The personal planets are the ones that move more quickly. The Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars. The other planets that move more slowly, those aren't the ones that change every month. Those aren't the ones that make the horoscope different each month. Those are the ones that have long-term themes for year, years, you know? But what makes each month's horoscope shifting constantly is the movement of these quicker moving planets. So if you just imagine you're at this restaurant, which is your life, and you're turning, and, and now you're at the time where you're focusing on this specific division. Well, that specific division for Leo has to do with your health. It has to do with your connection with body and mind. I talk about this all the time, very loosely, but the profound nature of the connection between body and mind and unlocking the secrets of healing within your body 
with your mind is like completely mind blowing, you know, and life rocking. And this is a time where you move your attention to your health, to your vitality, to, um, and, and if you're a mainstream medical person, this is the house of medicine. If you're an alternative person, this is the house of alternative medicine. If you run the line between them, it's there. This is yoga. This is um, also called the mundane experience. So what your life is like every day, your daily experience, when you get up, the scene that you see around you, what you see at your office, you know, what your routine is like, that is what is embodied in the essence of where the personal planets are moving for you now. And that's going to get stronger with time. So good things to do during this time, get health checkups. One caution about that is sometimes when you get information when Mercury is in retrograde, it's not completely accurate. So if there's something weird, you might want to get a second run, but at least starting to schedule appointments, starting to ask the questions, you know, what am I behind on? Do I need to get my teeth cleaned? You know, just like basic upkeep things for your body to keep it running well. Also asking the questions about your diet. This is the house of diet and lifestyle and nutrition. So maybe your questions are bigger. Maybe you want to do those things for a living or you already do those things for a living. But at the very minimum, it's for your personal experience. So are you eating food that resonates with your body? Is it causing problems? If it isn't now, is it going to in the future? You know, can you make changes now that can improve your health now or in the future? These are the kind of questions that are really up and front center for Leo's. Also, this is the house of pets and animals. So if you have those creatures involved in your life, you might notice that there's more fervor or more attention needed there or more focus or more energy or more activity going on involving animals. Sixth house. So besides the sixth house, we also have strong energy still in the fifth house. And whether you're early, middle or late degree placements, you will still have, all of you will have the sixth house focus. It's just will be due to different planets being there at different times. Um, but then the fifth house is still accentuated and the fifth house has to do with children and creativity and conception and pregnancy and um, the children you already have or projects involving children. Anything that's a baby that you're creating. For some people, their babies are projects. They're not babies. Or some people have babies and projects. But this is like the birthing house, whatever you are birthing. This is also the house of talents and hobbies and um, things related to drama like um, acting and singing and um, instruments, playing instruments, music, um, also athleticism. Anyone who has strong gifts or any involvement with athleticism, this house is here. This is also the house of true love. And ultimately, it's the house of fun. You notice all the things that I've listed, most of those things have to do with things that could be fun. Now, if there's a challenge there, maybe that's not as fun, but this is the house of fun. So when I see this being accentuated in someone's chart, I know that this is a time for you to have more fun. We are so, hmm, let's see, bombarded by information and marketing and now faster, better, bigger, more, that we lose sight of the natural rhythm of things. And that's part of what I hope to assist with is understanding that there are natural rhythms at play with the movement of the planets. And we are affected by those things. So the more you understand what the nature of the energy is that is going on, then you can use that energy consciously and actively to improve your quality of experience. So that's what we want, right? We want to have an easier life. We want to have a happy life. We want to have a more fulfilling life. So if you know this is time to be focusing on certain things and you do those certain things, that is going to be better for you to focus on those things. So what else do we have going on? Now we've got early degree placements. You have Saturn moving through the fifth house. Some middle and the rest of the late degree placements still have Saturn in the fourth house. This is a long-term transit. Saturn is, well, every planet, every placement, every sign has this range of potential expression. There are negative traits to each sign. There are positive traits to each sign. There are potentials that run in this spectrum. And it's the same for the planets. So the planets have this range of potential expression from lowest to highest. Some of the planets are known more for their upside, like Jupiter, and some of the planets are known more for their downside, like Saturn. So Saturn is known to be bringing hindrances and difficulties and obstacles and heaviness and challenges. 
But in the scheme of life, the work that Saturn makes you do can make your life better for the future. There is a very brilliant person um, close to me who showed me a picture of what it was for Venus, what Venus's orbit looks like when it does its retrograde, like the bigger picture of Venus's full orbit over time. And not only is it a beautiful, beautiful sacred geometrical shape, which is amazing, but you can see when it goes retrograde, what it's doing and what it looks like. It's really cool. But the point is the same person has figured out this certain rhythm of the planets and how the timing of their movement moves into how it, they, they count into each other. It's hard for me to explain it because it's still kind of new to me, but it's basically showing this bigger picture, this benevolent creator at work with a bigger plan, with a bigger picture. And sometimes, so if you're on one of the small orbits where something is going and it's a little bit incoherent at that moment, if you take it up to the bigger picture and look at what it's creating, this beautiful sacred geometrical shape and this coherent experience, then that really changes how you look at life, you know? So if you know that there is a divine creator that is orchestrating things, that even if they seem difficult, that there is a very good chance that over time you're going to get to see how those things had to happen the way that they did in order for whatever else to come into being. So if you're having difficulties with Saturn, try to remember that. You know, that there's incoherence, there's awkwardness, there's heaviness, there's difficulties. It can be crushing. It can make you feel like you're having the life um, just sucked out of you. And this, for some of you, is going to be in the sector of home, family, real estate projects, um, childhood, things like that. And some of you will have it in the house of children, creativity, conception, pregnancy, creative projects, or romance. So there's this heaviness in one of those sectors for most of you. Now there is an upside to Saturn, and that is the work that you do with the challenges that come up can help you build something for the future. So if something is a problem for you now, then just remember that Saturn wants you to be disciplined and Saturn wants you to work and Saturn wants you to be consistent. And when you do that, you set in motion the cycle for the next 28 to 30 years in that field of experience, okay? So I just wanted to put that out there because I know that wherever Saturn is, some challenges are happening and I wanted to speak to that. So there's all kinds of other things happening in the charts. The, the, the general theme is it's retrograde. Check out my Mercury retrograde. Look for Annie Botticelli Mercury retrograde on my YouTube channel to see more about what to do and what not to do in Mercury's in retrograde um, and more specifics about what that transit brings. We have Mercury retrograde three to four times a year and it spans about you know, 12 weeks or so in its whole entirety. So the more you can know about that transit, the better, and all of January is covered completely in it. So it's time to look back. It's time to look in. You can be very productive, just try to not launch things. You can set up things very productively in anticipation of a launch. You can very busily build on what you've already been working with. You can continue things you've been doing. You can add to them. You can analyze them. And those are all really good. And so ultimately we want Leos to have more fun and have more focus on their health and their day-to-day -day affairs in January. So check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Check out my blog. Um, there I have a new astrology blog and uh, I blog about other things as well. Definitely check out my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine. It is available on a sliding scale. It is intended to help you locate and clear the blocks that are interfering with you shining your brilliance into the world. That is my passion. And if you are interested in having successful online business, if you are a healing practitioner who wants to bring your geographically based business into the online world, and other such um, people, you can check my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, and click on Programs, and click on Create Successful Online Business, and you can see who this program is for. So if any of those things, it says, this is for you if, this might be for you. So I'm enrolling that in that now. And while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter, and get perks that go along with that. And I hope you have a wonderful new year and month. I'll see you soon, bye.